Greetings friends, it's time for the last batch of flesh tones and in this one I'm going for the lightest tone. Um, I'm going to use as a base the Barbarian flesh that I liked, but I'm going to mix in this even lighter kind of peach elven flesh to make it uh, a little bit brighter. Now this might end up looking like mustard, I don't know. We will find out. Mix it, mix it, mix it up. It's definitely lighter. Definitely a little bit lighter. Okay, good. I'm just rinsing out my brush because I don't I don't want to mix in the raw on this. I want to have the brush only have the mix. You want to get that? Can't tell if that's supposed to be a sleeve underneath a jacket. I think it is. Um, so I'm gonna say that she's done for right now. But that's definitely a fair skinned um, skin tone here that we're working with. This guy has uh, like aviator goggles. Also wearing some kind of like turtleneck sweater vibe. So I'm just going on thin with these these dudes. I don't know what the hell that guy is. He kind of looks like a ninja. Here we have like some kind of military commander dude. How are we looking, Dave? Okay. Yep, 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 yep. These viral outbreak minis are awesome uh, because they're cheap, but also not the best sculpts with the finest details, and they're small. I would say if you're looking for modern minis that aren't like post-apocalyptic warlords, you, you can do pretty well with these. Um, yeah, so they're taking the paint. I think that's in large part because we primed them the right way, people. Um, I feel like that might have been the most important message of this tutorial series. Prime your minis the right way. Because um, if you do, it will save you countless hours of frustration. This guy's like an Abe Lincoln looking dude. He's got a beard and he's got some vibes. Professor blah blah blah. That's what we're gonna call him. Professor blah blah blah. Getting his hands there. He's got a cane in one hand and a book in the other. Professor, what do we do about Cthulhu? Well, my friend, 
Here I am holding the Book of Ancient Secrets. All right, this is uh, a dude squatting down over some file folders. Yes. Nothing more important than filing things. And he's got um, a sweet set of shades on, which I am currently covering up with my, my sloppy paint job. And then he's got a file in one hand, which I'm going to paint. Paint all around that, get his thumb in there. And then get his other hand. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will. So, as much as I'm complaining about these sculpts being cheap, I think one of the things that drew me to them was the variety. Like, where else are you going to find, like, a dude with the files? Like, that's great, you know? Or here's somebody in a chair. Somebody in a chair. And I think also, like, you could use these in games like Shadowrun if you wanted to. If you play those kind of games, why not? Um, this, this is going to be incredibly hard to paint. Uh, why? Well, because like this person, this person has like a laptop. They have a laptop and there's like keys on the laptop. I almost wish that that came as a separate piece so I could paint it separately and then like glue it in. But again, not worrying too much about those kind of details. Especially not while we're on the flesh coverage phase of life. Okay, oh, sorry person in chair. All right, this is a uh, technician holding a dog. Some kind of a nurse person. Holding a dog. Oh, I just fucked that up royally. Oh, hey, Dave. Could you grab some batteries for the little mini light from the fridge? Because it just went out. And with it went my ability to see details. Okay. Not much there. All right. This is interesting. So... Now I'm on to these larger um, Reaper minis. This is like a 30 scale, 30 millimeter scale instead of 28. And um, what is interesting is that I bought a metal version of this guy and a plastic version. It's essentially the same sculpt, right? Am I right? You got this guy jacket open he's holding a book in one hand and a gun in the other um so we'll see what the differences are between the metal and the plastic guy but um i'm using two different skin tones so that way if we wanted to use this guy we could in more than just one way Not a lot of coverage needed there. I'll get his hand. Looks like he's carrying this book in one hand. Solid investigator mini for Cthulhu. Book in one hand, gun in the other. Okay, now we got these big dudes. These are big, big guys. Um, a lot of neck and facial coverage needed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wonderful. 
I'm kind of overbrushing. I don't want to be sloppy. So I'm kind of overbrushing just to get in all the nooks and crannies. And I will have to go back and repair this dude in so many ways. Looks like he's kind of clutching at his jacket in a authoritative professor sort of way, um, which is just fine. Maybe, maybe he's a friendly NPC, or maybe he's a big bad end guy. Who knows? Do, 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 do. Here's another guy who's like, see ya, I'm out. Got the back of his neck. Got the front of his neck. Got under his chin. Got his ear and his forehead and his face. Got his hand and his thumb. And he's holding his bowler hat. In the one hand and his other hand's holding his briefcase. I don't know if he's supposed to be like a physician. Making a house call. Don't know. But he is here. Okay, so. While those guys are drying on the first coat, I'm going to go back to the metal minis. Back to the fact that the metal minis. Uh huh. This is scientist dude. Get his ears, get his face. He has like a little chinny chin chin beard, which I'll have to go up and detail. And he's wearing some goggles, but I got to get his nose. Got to get all those other little details in there. This side of his face, his uh, forehead. Yeah. The skin comes first, people. The skin comes first. His bare hands holding a beaker of some mystery liquid. Mm -hmm. I do have some minis that we haven't even touched yet, but that's because they aren't showing any exposed flesh. Uh, they're like gas masks and like whole body outfits, so that's why we're holding off on that. All right, this is like skinny nerd with books, so good opportunity here because he's got like a short sleeve shirt on. Um, I kind of feel like maybe they base this sculpt on like Bill Gates. based on like the hair and the glasses and just the overall level of nerditude. Get his neck in there. Like, yeah. All right, now his arms. He's got real scrawny little arms. And the back of his hand and the back of his arms. He's got a massive wrist watch that will have to be painted up. I'm imagining that it's like a Seiko silvery metal wrist watch from the 70s, maybe the 80s. Um, yeah. 
Good. Going good here, Bill Gates. He's got a stack of books, so I'm going to hit his hand. And as I'm looking at Dude, I see where uh, some of the details during the priming I must have missed. Um, must have missed this. Because there's some exposed metal that wasn't primed. Which isn't that big of a deal. Um, I mean, there's still primer on there. It's just not as thoroughly covered as I would have liked. Not the end of the world. Probably just means a few more coats of paint across the board for your guy. For old Bill. Yes, nice and messy. Come on, Bill, get in the base. There we go. All right, this last one is the voodoo lady. Uh, I'm going to give her this base coat. I might end up going back and changing her flesh tone. Make her a little more of a Creole vibe, but... Um, I'll put this in here just for now. She either looks like she's dancing or casting a spell. Or maybe both. Maybe her spell casting involves dancing. Don't know. And frankly, don't care. She's good. She's good. Really cool kind of sculpt. Very, very different vibe. And I like it. All right, witchy woman. You go in your base. Okay, so that was round one. Let's see what um, these guys look like with one coat on and compare them to some of the other minis. So I'm going to find my, my classic Morpheus and we'll put them side by side. There we go. So what do you think? There's the two coats of Morpheus for my people of color, and there's this fair-skinned person there. See how you could see a little difference there? It's not overly dramatic. It's not too contrasty, but it definitely is a noticeable difference in skin tone. And I like it. So i uh, put Morpheus down here and go for round two. So we're just going to go to the cleanup round on my fair-skinned folks, and that will finish off their flesh. Particular, particularly looking for coverage. Don't want to have gray primer peeking through, but I also don't want to do such a heavy coat that I lose um, some of these nice details, because on these viral outbreak minis, there are not a ton of details in the faces. They have cool poses, to be certain. Definitely cool poses. I'm going to let her dry down there. This is my dude here. Got to get that forehead and face. Yes. Yes, and yes. Okay. These guys go pretty quickly because there's not, in most of these, there's not a ton of, um, of flesh. And they're small. So you don't need a lot. Pretty small. This is that guy with the goggles. Like the 
the, uh, the aviator goggles. Mm -hmm. Here's the military general dude. Gonna get him a little more even here as he stands in a solemn pose. Yep. This was woman covering her mouth in horror. Um, and I am just going to fill in a couple of those air bubble areas. Shouldn't have any air bubbles, but somehow there was one. Okay. Yes, going quickly. Here's, uh, here's the dude with the cane and the book. As I said, he kind of has like an Abe Lincoln vibe. Want to make sure that I get um, even coverage, especially on the highlights like his forehead and stuff. That should be covered pretty thoroughly. And his hands definitely need another coat because there's a lot of gray peeking through. I will have to meticulously go back and um, fix all the spots where my flesh tones are bleeding over. And that's okay. Part of the process. You have to believe in the process, people. When I first started, I did not believe in the process. And I would get discouraged when I would see like what the first coat of something looked like. And then I realized after watching many um, painting tutorials that it's because all these guys that are and gals and people that paint are doing seven to eight different stages of painting. You know, you have a couple coats for flesh and then you have a couple coats for um, your primary colors on your clothing and then a couple coats of, you know, highlights and then you've got, I mean, it's, it's just, it feels like a never ending process. It's not it does at some point come to an end when you decide. But I mean, even if you just do the basics, you're gonna be here for a while. So try to enjoy the ride. Don't get discouraged. Believe in the process. Okay, moving right along. Coat two is going on pretty easy with these folks. Um, here's wheelchair operative with the laptop. I'm trying to paint kind of up so I get that chin line. And then across the hairline on the forehead. And then last but not least, the top of the hands, really important there. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Okay, Professor Douchebag. Need to clean up his neckline, bro. He needs to go to the barber. Okay, face. Top of his head. He has kind of a flat face on this sculpt, to be quite honest with you. Not the most ideal, but uh, it is what it is. And you know what it is, don't you, Dave? Okay. Here's a plastic version of Private Eye Dude. Get his cheeks and chin. I feel like I'm losing a lot of details on his face, but um, what are you gonna do? back of his hands, the other side back of his hands, done, all right, this guy, um, yep, same thing, neck, this kind of looks like George from A Wonderful Life, uh, so, so long partners, Merry Christmas.
All right, this is the uh, metal mad scientist. I like this sculpt. I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to do a lot of his very tight features. He has like goggle-like glasses. So I'm just trying to get his flesh at least evened out and uh, Hopefully when we get to the details on this dude, it'll come together. Again, we must have faith in the process. Fingers, thumb, top of hand, good to go. Uh, Bill Gates. Getting Bill's ears and chin and neck and the top of his forehead along his hairline. Okay. Get Bill's arms, his skinny arms. They should really look like he spends more time inside coating than outside. And again, on the back side of his arms, particularly where his arms meet his shirt. Now on that other arm that's holding the book, books, plural, I want to get a nice thorough coat on the back elbow there and the front. How we looking, Dave? Okay. Dave says we look good, which much, must mean that we're getting close. The last sculpt that I'm going to do, oh, come on, Bill, get in the slot. The last sculpt I'm going to do is my um, witchy woman. But you remember how I was saying how I want to give her a little more, uh, a little more uh, Creole vibes? So I'm taking some of my brown paint. That I was using before and mixing it in with this lighter color. So she's going to have her own custom flesh tone. How about that? Hashtag diversity. Gorgeous. I actually like this the best of all. This is dope. Good color mix. Don't be afraid to try things out, people. You can always use another coat of paint if you don't like it. But I do like it. My girl looks good. Looking good, man. Looking good. All right, well. We just put flesh coats on a lot of minis. And this took way longer than I thought, and it's just the flesh coats. So um, when we get to the next part, we'll be exploring putting on our colors, our first coat of colors onto people's clothing and that kind of stuff. And it's one of those things where you wanna think really deeply about what you wanna do so that you're not wasting paint. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and see you on the next one.